Hello, everybody. I'm Ricky Smith, and this is Faith on Friday Presents. At Faith on Friday Presents, we're all about highlighting, inspiring people, engaging topics, and small businesses. And don't forget, while you're here, subscribe, like, and share our content with your network. You never know what someone's going to need. So, have you ever been curious about hypnosis? I know, we've all seen it in the show or at the circus, and people are running around acting like chickens. But we've also heard about people being hypnotized, losing weight, stop smoking, or whatever. But have you ever really wondered what it is, who it's for, and why it may even exist? Well, I'm going to introduce you to someone today who's going to tell us all about it. Everybody, please say hello to Kimberly Lorenz. Hi, Kimberly. How are you? I am fantastic. How are you? I'm doing good. Thank you, ma'am. I think I'm doing good. Did you just hypnotize me right now? Do I know? No, Sometimes? I oh, don't okay. do that without permission. Ooh. Never. Okay. Thank you. Cause I wasn't sure. But in that case, I'm doing great. Kimberly, good. I am so excited to have you here because this is a topic that very few people have heard of but know very little about, and it is hypnosis. So Kimberly, before we jump into all of that, tell us a little bit about you, where you are, and what you do. Well, I am a board certified hypnotist and I am in the Boise, Idaho area. I have a, an office here in town where I help people in my office, but I also work with people online all over the world, actually. I've had um, lots of clients in other countries. So the only barrier really for clients is time and language. And when I say board certified hypnotist people, you're right, don't really know what that is. Um, so I like to say it like this. I really just help people get rid of and banish that um, inaccurate or excessive fear that's really holding them back so they can just live their most powerful, authentic lives. Man, that sounds so good. And it sounds like something that everyone needs. So let's first talk a little bit about what hypnosis is and what myths there are around hypnosis. That is such a great question. And I love to talk about this is really a lot of what I do. There is so much myth and misperception about what hypnosis is because of TV, movies, Hollywood, and, and even hypnosis stage shows. So hypnosis really just is very focused attention. And so it's something that somebody cannot make you or trap you inside of, right? Hypnosis is actually a consensual um, interaction between hypnotist and client or hypno hypnotist on stage and participant in a show. So anytime TV or movies or even a stage hypnotist makes it look like or make you think that they have all the power and the control and the person that's participating doesn't, that's not accurate at all. It's either for dramatic effect or for funny effect on stage. That's interesting because I've been to those hypnosis shows and I've seen people get up there and that, you know, the hypnotist does the whatever, I don't know. And before you know it, people are dancing and this and that and the other. And, and, and I guess that can happen because like you said, it's focused attention on something. So that, that to me is kind of interesting. So let's like, yeah, mm -hmm. but like you said, it's not, it's consensual. You can't, I can't be sitting here at a coffee shop, minding my little own business. And some guys over there go, you know, you're going to rob a bank. You're going to rob a bank. That doesn't happen is what you're saying. Exactly. Really? you've actually done hypnosis hundreds of times in your life already. You just didn't know it. So anytime you've been scrolling on social media or watching a really good movie and someone said your name or came into the room and you didn't notice, you were in a state of hypnosis. So it's naturally occurring, right? So on stage or here in my office or on Zoom, when I'm working with my clients, we just, I just help guide you into that focus state on purpose instead of accidentally. Um, so yeah, you're right. Someone can't come in and, and just take over your mind and make you do things. In fact, in hypnosis also, you remember everything and you're in 
control. Mm. And so you can come out of hypnosis or stop. You could stop watching that movie anytime you wanted to, right? You could, if you heard a fire alarm or someone, you know, something, some data came in from your environment and you needed to respond, you'd be able to. And the same is here with me or even on stage. So hypnosis is consensual and the person that's following the instructions, the client, they have actually all the power to make it happen or not happen. You have just blown every myth out of the water for anybody watching, thinking that I can just randomly be walking down the street and be hypnotized and start clucking like a chicken. That does not happen. I am so happy to know that. I really am. I don't know why, but I am. So Kimberly- Well, it's a relief, right? Because it's scary to think that something could be done to you. And so I kind of ruined stage hypnosis for everybody that's ever enjoyed it. So sorry about that. (laughs) We'll be fine. We'll be fine. There's still Santa Claus. So we have that. So (laughs) let me ask you, how did you get into becoming a hypnotherapist? That is, I try to make it not a long story, but The, you know, the shortest nutshell I can tell you is I spent 20 years of my life, um, starting around age 21 with chronic pain. And I did all the things I flew across the country. I saw all the doctors. I got all the tests, never really had a diagnosis. Um, I tried doing all the, like kind of the mainstream we think of now, natural things like all the diets, elimination things, all the supplements as well, never got better. And that was just my life. I was kind of, you know, kind of miserable, but holding steady. And then a life event came along um, where my home flooded and I had to live in a hotel for a real period. It was a very stressful time. My husband lost his job. All these things happened one right after the other. And after that time period ended and I finally got into a new place, a space where I could feel safe again, all sorts of new and worse symptoms started popping up really terrible anxiety and panic where the kind of anxiety where I felt like I pulled out of my body and lost control of myself. And I would, was driving cars with my little kids in the back seat, And I was like, I'm going to kill someone. This is right. terrible. So I started trying to do all mm-hmm. sorts of the very um, Eastern things. I, I mm-hmm. did all the energy healing and Reiki and mm-hmm. acupuncture. And those things were helping, but right. they were only giving me relief for a very short amount of time. And I, through that time, kept seeing, um, as I was scrolling and looking for answers, hypnosis, hypnosis, hypnosis just kept coming at me. And truly my initial reaction was that is just crazy. I can't believe people do that. It's not even real. It's just fake. Mm -hmm. And I was just totally rejected it and still having terrible pain and neurological symptoms and panic. And I couldn't sleep and my life was miserable. And I finally got to the end of my rope. I truly had my dark night of the soul. And I thought, well, I have nothing left to lose. I'm going to actually investigate hypnosis. So I did. And I, I thought, well, maybe it can help me, but I was too scared to go to a hypnotist because I didn't have any information that I just gave everyone here. I didn't have all those myths were still existing in my okay. mind. So I just decided I'm going to get trained. I'm going to become a hypnotist myself. I'm going to fix myself. And who knows, maybe I'll be able to help other people. And so that's what I did. I went and I got trained and immediately it started helping me immediately relief, pain got better, anxiety got better. And very, very quickly in just a matter of probably four to six weeks, my life completely turned around. My body, my body began to heal and I became tougher, more robust to have more energy. And really my life just took off and I just started helping clients and, and here I am. That's the, that's like, and the the rest is history, I guess. And I just keep thinking I got to help people. People need to know a hypnotist needs to be on every corner. It needs to be the first thing that Mm -hmm. people look for when they are struggling with any kind of significant life event, emotional disturbance, stress, Mm -hmm. fear. It's just so powerful, so fast. And people are, honestly afraid of it or think it's fake. And so it's my job and my passion to educate and help. See, you, you put, there's so much in that, that I want to ask you about. One of the things is you said you were trained and that it helped and it was long-term. So my first question is, where do you go to get trained to be a hypnotist? Well, you know, it, there's many different places you could go. So I would say to anybody listening who is thinking that actually sounds like an interesting career, I might be interested in that. Um, 
we're going to talk about my contact information. I'm actually a certified trainer. So I do certify new hypnotists as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so you can contact me. Um, but as a big sis to everybody out there looking, look for, um, schools, um, and certifications that have outside approval, right? They're aligned with bigger organizations. So there's associations that are very large that people voluntarily join, like the National Guild of Hypnotists, um, <clears throat> excuse me. And so what we want to make sure to do, because most states in the U.S. in particular don't have a lot of laws on the books to regulate hypnosis and hypnotherapy, do your due diligence and make sure the person that you're working with is certified, that they've taken good training, that they've been doing what they've been doing for a while. It doesn't mean new hypnotists aren't <clears throat> good to work with, but do your due diligence and make sure because it can be a little bit, a little bit wild, wild west in the, in the world of hypnosis. And so, and, and that's so good. And then the other thing that you mentioned is it long, it's that it's long-term. How does that, the long-term part help when you're talking about focused attention, focused, how, how does that help you long-term? What is it? What does hypnosis do? Good question. So the way I approach um, working with a person is they come in and they have usually one to two, sometimes three big symptoms in their life. So when I said earlier, I help people with fear, mm -hmm. really that can exhibit in everybody very differently. Some people will be a smoker. Some people will be eating too much sugar. Some people will not be able to sleep at night. Some people, because of their fear, won't be able to make the cold calls or stand on stage and talk. So everybody's symptom is different. So I say to them, hey, let's work on the main thing, the biggest thing in your life that if we got rid of that thing, everything would be better. And in a state of hypnosis, what happens is your subconscious mind is where the biggest part of your, of who you are exists, right? And that is where all these programs that live. So you come into the world kind of like a blank slate. You have an operating system and then you start learning things and things happen to you and events and people teach us things or program us to think, believe, and feel certain ways. And sometimes those are not helpful. And so in hypnosis, it's much, much easier to access those kinds of programs that have been running automatically for so long that are blocking us to find them, neutralize them, remove them. And, and I actually think of it as getting you back to who you're supposed to be, not changing you into a new person. Because really, I think everybody comes into this life um, as they're supposed to be. And it's only through the negative interactions in our life that we end up having, you know, the negative coping mechanism. So I feel like I'm getting you back to you. But yes, I do lots of really great suggestions and help build up your confidence. But really, it's a natural and authentic confidence. I like that. So you came into the world being who you're supposed to be, but through the negative interactions, I, it makes me think of things like fear, you know, people who fall down, um, who've never learned to ride a bike because they fell one time. Um, people who won't fly because they saw a plane crash when they were six, somebody who will never get married because it, relationships are bad. You know, that is so good. It's like those, like you said, the operating systems on your phone that run. Yes without you knowing it half the time, you know, and you're it's exactly what it is. That is so good. So here's my other question with that. Can everybody be hypnotized? And is Ooh, it, that's a good question. One? Great question. I believe, yes, basically everyone can be hypnotized. If you can have this conversation with me, um, or if you can listen to this and understand what we're saying and you're, you're tracking with us, you could be hypnotized. Hypnosis is consensual. So when people go to a stage show or work with a hypnotist and they don't get hypnotized and honestly, only the hypnotist generally knows because hypnotists are actually trained to be able to see the signs and know, um, hypnosis doesn't actually feel like anything. So you can't tell if you're hypnotized technically. Um, but you can tell if you got the results that you're looking for. So Everybody can be hypnotized. It's voluntary. So if there's fear or worry or misperceptions and myths, mm -hmm. it can block the effectiveness of what's going on. So just like a student can sit in a classroom um, with a teacher, that doesn't necessarily mean they will 
pay attention, listen, or be able to learn. There, there can be blocks to that interaction. And so when people come in to work with me, I help them understand, get rid of all those fears that are based on all those myths, explain what hypnosis feels like so that they have a much easier time. They can just feel really safe, relax, and, and really just follow my instructions, which is all you really need to do. Man, it, it, you make it sound so easy. I like that so much. So Kimberly, <laughs> if somebody wanted to work with you or continue this conversation, what's the best place for them to find you? The best place to find me is on my website. So my website is my last name, hypnosis.com. So lorenzhypnosis.com. And if you go visit my website, you can schedule a free complimentary um, consultation. So I feel like everybody deserves to get their questions answered before they consider, you know, working with me. So I spend 45 minutes um, talking with people, you know, understanding what their problem is and giving them a really fair evaluation if I think I can help them before um, we talk about moving forward. So information is free with me. I love that. Y'all heard it. She will do a free consultation for <laughs> you. And don't worry, if you didn't get her information, all of her contact stuff is going to be in the description below. And don't worry, please make sure to reach out. She's interested in hearing from you. And while you're here, don't forget to subscribe, like, and share our content as well. Kimberly, my friend, before I let you go, you got to play a game. <laughs> all right, I'm ready. I know, girl, this game is called <laughs> This or That. It's really simple. I'm going to give you the choice of two or three things. And you, All right. off the top of your head, just tell me which one you like the best. Are you ready to okay. play, my friend? I am ready. Let's do it. Let's do this. iPhone or Android? iPhone. Mm, yellow light. Speed up or slow down? Mm, speed up. <laughs> I appreciate your honesty. <laughs> <laughs> Watch the movie or read the book? Oh, man. Read the book. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Wallflower or life of the party? Life of the party. Really? I would not have guessed that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I like it. In that vein, Prince or Michael Jackson? Michael Jackson. Okay. Without hesitation. That's impressive. Yeah. All right. Eat to live or live to eat? Uh, eat to live. Really? I, I don't know. I, I like food. I want it. Freaking I know. Food. I just don't have the foodie gene. I just don't have it. I don't either. I just like to eat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's true. <laughs> Reality um, TV. Yes, please. Or I just can't. Uh, I just can't anymore. <laughs> Reality anymore. TV. In, in, yeah, I used anymore. to love it. Okay. I never did. I yeah. could never get into it. Mm -mm. All right. Winter Wonderland or summertime fun? Mm, I don't want to pick either. I want to pick fall. Well, pick fall. It's your game. Girl. Fall. Fall. That was what I meant. Yeah, good yes. for you. <laughs> and finally, my friend, what is your favorite Olympic sport? Ice skating. Oh, I, like I don't skating. know why. I just love it. I, it Give me some Christy Yamaguchi, right? <laughs> oh, remember her? She was awesome. I don't know why. Yeah. Most folks that watch this, my favorite Olympic sport is curling. I just think that is the coolest. Oh, yes. I love it. And they're so into it. I just love it. Yeah, that's great. It's my old thing. Kimberly, this has been so much fun. Thank you so much for joining me today. I appreciate it. Why, thank you. I've had a lot of fun. So it's Aww. been awesome. All right, everybody. That's it for this time. But don't worry. We'll be back next week with more Faith on Friday Presents. Mm -hmm.